Namaste. Welcome. Welcome to my heart. Welcome to our noon meditation. Welcome to our Sunday Sangha, Satsang. Today is a special day. It is a day that in the Kriya Yoga lineage, we honor the lineage. We honor Sri Babaji, Lahiri Mahasaya Ji, Sri Yukateshwar Ji, Ramahansa Yogananda Ji, Sri Shelly Ji, Goswami Kriyananda Ji, all of the lineage holders in the Kriya Yoga lineage. All branches are honored today. So let us begin with a meditation. You'll see that the altar is different today. We have upon the altar a very ancient jyoti light that is used for special rituals. And a photograph, the photograph on the very top is Babaji Lahiri Mahasaya, Yukteswarji, and Yogananda. Just down below on the left is Sri Shelly Ji, and on the right is Paramahansa Yogananda Ji. So let us begin with a meditation this morning. You will sit with your spine erect, focus your attention at the sun center. A point between your eyes. And turn your head to the left with a double exhalation. <sighs> Bring your head back to the center. Begin to watch your breath. Take three long, deep inhalations and exhalations. O oh, great spirit, saints and sages of all times, of all places, O oh, ye pathmakers of old, namaste. Most beloved divine Lord of life, in all of your names and all of your forms, Namaste. Most beloved gurus of the holy Kriya lineage. Thou who has sustained the teachings that we might find ever greater wisdom in our lives. Love, compassion, joy, happiness, enlightenment. Namaste. May our path be swept clear today that we might see that which needs to be seen and hear that which needs to be heard, that we might be uplifted and vivified and strengthened. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaste. Once upon a time in India, in Mother India, the ancient land, in the north of India, there lived a family. And unto that family was born a boy. And there was great happiness. They were happy when the girls were born too. This boy grew into a young man. And he became married and he had children. And he went to work in the railroad, the Indian Railroad. Quite an interesting place to work. Now his name was Lahiri. 
And Lahiri had learned to meditate as a very young boy. And he came from a family that was devout meditators. His mother and father had their gurus, their teachers. But Lahiri went along his life with his wife and his children. And one day, while he's working at his desk, a knock comes on the door. It's a messenger. Lahiri is getting transferred uh -huh. from his home. He's getting transferred to a station in the high Himalayas. Uh, you know, he can't get the wife and the children and everybody ready, but he has to go. So next day, Lahiri gets up, goes, gets on the train to get to his new station. The last station at the end of the train, way, 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 way up in the Himalayas. And I gotta tell you, he was very happy. He had been wanting to go to the Himalayas to meditate to be among the quiet mountains. He had wanted to go, not that he didn't love his wife and his children, but oh, to go to the Himalayas to meditate. So he gets off and he's very, very happy. Goes to the little room that they've given him and shows up for work the next day. Starts his assignment takes his lunch break. And as he's walking down the street for lunch, he sees in front of him, suddenly, a man. He recognizes this man. And his heart begins to beat fast and he's so happy. His heart just fills with love. And he sees that his guru is in front of him. And he recognizes him. He recognizes the face of his guru. And his guru says, ah, Lahiri, you finally came. You finally came, I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. Reaches out and they hug and he gives his blessing. They hear he pronouns and touches the feet of the guru. And off they go together. Now, I'm not quite sure how this worked, but Lahiri, for the whole week, he spent the whole time with his guru. And he didn't show up at the office, but nobody seemed to mind. He went and sat at the feet of his guru and he learned Kriya. His guru, Sri Babaji, taught him, reminded him of Kriya, the practice of Kriya. It was a good week. And there was time during that week, it is said, the Sri Babaji leaned over and blessed Lahiri so that the few remnants of past life desires that he had would be fulfilled. And he could go on to meditate and to find his enlightenment in this incarnation. So Lahiri is pretty happy. A week's gone by, he's been with his guru, he's been meditating, he's in the Himalayas, he hasn't had to go to work. It's a pretty good thing. Everything he's wanted has come to pass. Until the end of the seven days. They finish their meditation, their morning meditation, and his guru fixes a beautiful with his own hands, a beautiful, beautiful meal. And if your guru has ever fixed you a beautiful meal, it's, it's really something. 
And he fixed him a nice meal and he fed him. And after his chai at the end of the meal, he said, now Lahiri, tomorrow you're going to have to leave. Please, Guruji, let me stay here. And he said, no, tomorrow there's going to come a telegram. He said, Lahiri, this job was brought here for you to come. You did not come for the job. And now everything that you need to do here, it is done here. Now it is time for you to go back and to pick up your responsibilities. You're a householder. You have a wife. You remember her. You have children. You remember them. You have work. Do you remember that? You have dharma, duty, mama and papa to take care of, family to take care of. You're a householder. Your karma is as a householder, not as a sannyasi here in the Himalayas. Now, Lahiri was a little disappointed if the truth were to be known. Happy, but a little disappointed. He wanted to stay with his guru, but alas, it did not work. Next morning, as predicted, bright and early, right after sunrise meditation, Lahiri receives a telegram saying, you need to go back. There was a mistake. You're supposed to be back at your original post. Please get on the train and come today. So here he goes to say goodbye to his guru, to Babaji. Now there's a lot of myths about Babaji that have flown around through all the years, all the decades. But Babaji was a man. Babaji was incarnated as a in a human body, a very special man, for sure, very special, special soul, for sure. But he was, he was incarnated as a man. And <clears throat> he understood the loss that Lahiri was feeling and said to him, well, Lahiri, I will give you a boon. Now, a boon is when your guru gives you something that, or God gives you something that they say is a special blessing. And they say, as my guru said, it's not something you've earned. I'm not sure mystically about this, but it is a special blessing. He said to him, if you need me, call upon me and I will be here for you. If you need me, call upon me and I will be there for you. And he gave him his blessing and shared his darshan with Lahiri one more time. And Lahiri goes back to Benares where his family was and picks up his responsibilities, picks up his work, picks up his dharma and breathes his kriya and meditates, goes to work every day, bring home the soybean bacon, using my guru's words, picks up his responsibility to his family his wife, his children, but he meditates. He breathes his Kriya. Now Lahiri, <clears throat> no name, no fame. He didn't want any name or any fame, no big organization at all. But people started coming to him in the house 
They started coming to him at work. They started asking him for guidance. And he did something special. Very special. Very, very, very unusual in India at that time. He gave Kriya to anybody who came to him. Everybody. It mattered not their religion. It mattered not their caste. He gave the Kriya to everyone who came to ask. He said, he taught, he lived. Live your life. Fulfill your dharma. But in fulfilling your dharma and in living your life, meditate. Meditate, meditate, meditate. Breathe your Kriya. Now he, you might have said, well, you know, what did he mean? And he said, if you follow Muhammad the prophet, <clears throat> and do your worship five times a day, and meditate, and breathe your Kriya. If you follow Jesus the Christ, go to church, read your Bible, and meditate and breathe your Kriya. If you are a Hindu, meditate four times a day. Do your puja and breathe your Kriya. If you are a householder, you have Dharma. All of you who are here are householders. I'm a householder. In our lineage, this branch of Kriya Yoga, all but one of the lineage holders were householders. So if you look at the photograph, you see at the top, if I can do this, I'm not sure I can't, I'm sorry. Babaji is not considered to have been married, although there's many, many much speculation about that. It's not clear if he was or not, but Lahiri was married and had children. Yukiteshwarji was married and had children. Brahmahansi Yogadandaji was never married, um, but had many, 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 many children. He started schools in India where he educated many young people and considered them to be his children. Sri Shaliji was married twice. His first wife passed away and he had children. Goswami uh, Kriyanandaji was married also twice. His first wife passed away. And he married again. And he had his many disciples. They lived, this is considered to be a branch of the lineage of householders. Paramahansa Yogananda taught that the life of a householder is a life of value. Sri Shaliji lived and taught, Goswami Kriyananda lived and taught that the life of a householder is a life in which you will find great opportunity for spiritual enlightenment. Now, the greatest thing that Lahiri brought to us in his time and that has continued through this branch of the lineage. And I say this branch because you will see that every one of these teachers, uh, Lahiri was not the only one that Sri Babaji taught, but Lahiri taught many, many people. There are many branches. Teshwarji taught many disciples. There are branches. 
Paramahansa Yoganandaji taught many disciples there are branches. Just like every tree has a trunk with branches. Shelly G taught multiple disciples and there are branches and certainly Goswami Kriyanandaji taught initiated disciples and there are many branches of the lineage from him. People who are living and initiating disciples and teaching. What am I trying to say to you? What's important this morning? What's really important? The Kriya practice was given to everyone. Anyone who came, who asked, who showed themselves worthy by their asking, by their devotion. It is said that of the various levels of Kriya, Lahiri always gave out the first level as is done. And that you had to show that you had progressed in order to move to getting the second level or the third level, etc. Everyone received the technique. And a major change in what Lahiri brought to us is to say that it matters not if you are following a, a religious tradition, if your family religious tradition is Islam, is Judaism, is Christianity, is Hinduism, is Zoroastrianism. It matters not what it is. Here, here's the Kriya technique. You are welcome. Meditate, practice, follow your tradition. Now, today, as much as, perhaps as much as at that time, it is important to know that the Kriya practice is open and available to everyone. There is no exclusion. People are not excluded. You find the teachings, you find a living teacher, and you share in the teachings. Now the greatest blessing I believe that we have gained, certainly that I have gained, the greatest blessing is the living tradition, the living lineage. Today we have books, we have CDs, we have tapes, we have everything, right? And, and so people say, well, what do I need a living teacher for? What do I need a living lineage for? What does that mean anyway? Well, it means that you're getting the yoga city, the spiritual energy of everyone who is part of this lineage. When you, when I share something with you that I have learned from my guru, you get the yoga city that I have gained through my practice. But you also get the yoga city that my guru gained from his practice and his guru and his guru's guru and so on and so on and so on. When you share what you have gained through your practice, your students, the people you share with, ah, they gain what you, the yoga city, the spiritual energy that you have acquired, that you, the states of consciousness that you have attuned to through your practice, and then through your teacher and your teacher's teacher and your teacher's teacher. It's quite a wonderful wonderful, wonderful aspect of having a living lineage. It means that you can meditate together. It means that you can ask questions as they're needed. For the teachers that you draw into your life are the teachers who have had some experience that you are trying to resolve some life experience 
that you are trying to solve or resolve. And they will share with you in a way that you can hear, that you can use. And this is a great blessing. Now, this question of who gets the technique is one that Kriyananda was often, often asked. And, and people would come and they would often say, well, you know, I belong to such and such a theology or I go to such and such a church. Can I come to study here? And the answer always is yes. Now, it may not be okay according to your theology, but it is acceptable here. Because Kriya Yoga is about primary experiences, your primary experience, your experience through meditation, your experience through practice of the techniques. Not about mine. Not about theirs. No one is asking that you believe anything. Kriya Yoga is about saying, here, this is the way that we have found that has brought us that which we are seeking. And using the words of my guru, he always said happiness. He used to make Shelly crazy. He'd say, Kriyanandaji, what are you, you know, he'd say, yeah, what are you saying? Happiness. Kriyananda would say happiness. Some people use the word enlightenment, but it's happiness. However you define happiness. Satori, insight into life. But really, most of you just want to be comfortable and want to be happy. And that's all right. It's in finding that comfort and finding that happiness that you will sustain your ability to live your life as a householder, which is what you have created for yourself in this incarnation, what we have created. Now, why is this important? Why is the householdership important? And why is the acceptance of anyone and giving everyone the opportunity to learn and to practice. In case you hadn't figured it out yet, the life of a householder is a great opportunity to learn spiritually. It's a great opportunity to learn self-discipline. It's a great opportunity to learn to live in the world with your feet on the ground. It's a great opportunity, great opportunities from cooking for other people, from preparing their food, from doing the shopping, from doing the laundry. From doing the cleaning. from setting aside your own wants and needs and desires, just setting those aside to be able to be of service to others, to be able to be kinder to those you are living with. Uh, sometimes being a householder is like being a coconut and your family members are the sandpaper that take the rough edges off of your personality, that give you the opportunity to take the rough edges off your personality, to have the opportunity to learn to duct tape with a smile, zip it with a smile, and not only zip the mouth so it doesn't say the words, ah, Quiet the mind. When the mind becomes irritated, shanti, 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 shanti. Something to quiet the mind. 
and the mind will quiet again and again and again and again. And the angry thoughts, the negative thoughts, the confining thoughts, the judgmental thoughts, they have the opportunity to arise very frequently. And they have the opportunity to be neutralized, to be dissolved, to go into the eaters. And so your life as a householder is your spiritual life. Going to the grocery store is your spiritual life. Cooking is your spiritual life. Cleaning is your spiritual life. Doing the laundry is your spiritual life. Meditating is your spiritual life. Studying is your spiritual life. Working is your spiritual life. You only have one life. Do not long for other people's lives. Do not long for what you think their lives are like. Remember as clear as if it were a moment ago, sitting in the very back of the temple, the main temple, and my guru was teaching before I had asked for discipleship. And he uh, was glowing. He just looked beautiful sitting in the, his chair. And he said, be happy. Be happy. Just be happy. I got to tell you the truth. My mind screamed. I'm sure he heard it because he said again, just be happy. My mind screamed. That's a fine thing for you to say. Sitting up there in that nice chair in front of that blue cloth with that light shining down on you, you have it easy. You don't have to live my life and do, and then I went through all the mental things, you know. You're not doing blah, 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 blah. A few minutes go by, and he says, be happy. Just be happy. Now, the truth is, I was sitting as close to the back door as I could get so that I could get out of there if I needed to. But I stayed. Week after week after week, I kept coming back and sitting by that back door. And he'd say, just be happy. And in a few blinks of an eye, I wasn't at the back door anymore. I was as close to the front of the dais as I could get. And one day he said, just be happy. And I went, yeah, just be happy. No matter what happens in your life, just be happy. And I realized that he had given me the greatest of blessings. He had given me permission to be happy. He had told me to be happy. He had told me it was okay for me to be happy. He had told me I deserved to be happy. And he said it again and again and again and again and again. And he gave me the Kriya techniques. And he taught me how to shut my mouth. Politely, quietly, he taught me. Kindly, with love, he taught me. Firmly and sternly, he taught me, but he taught me. And so, to me, you know, the blessing of the lineage, the blessing of the teaching, is that we see in front of us living teachers. And little did I know <laughs> all of the responsibilities of his life. Little did I know how hard he worked to be there on Sundays. Little did I know everything that he had been doing to create this kindergarten, as he used to call it, for his students, his disciples, to come and to unfold spiritually. But having the good, good, good karma to 
be asked to share many responsibilities over the years, very soon after I came, it became much, much clearer to me that he wasn't just sitting there on Sunday, having a nice time, sharing meditation. Wherever you are at this moment, whatever difficulties you're having in your life, whatever struggles you've had, whatever emotions rise in your mind, you too can be happy. You have the right to be happy. You can strive for your own happiness. Be content in this moment. Let us be content together in this moment. Do not be concerned about the next moment, but just about this moment. And know that the blessing of the Kriya lineage, the blessings of the lineage are with you. But the true blessing is to know that whatever it is that you value, whatever, however you're living your life, you have the ability to practice, to practice the techniques. And I'm going to tell you, some of you right now are struggling because you think you're not practicing enough. You're struggling because you think you're not doing enough. Just a, just a couple minutes, just a couple minutes. Just turn in for 30 seconds, for one minute, for two minutes, for three minutes, and let go of your idea of how long you must be doing something. You know, a, a beautiful soul that I have a lot of respect for said to me, wrote me a note and said, well, you know, I, I work, I'm working on Sunday, but I'd like to come to the meditation, but I can only come during the half an hour that I have for lunch. And I can't come the whole half an hour because I have to get, you know, I have to get back to work. Can I come? If you want to come for five minutes, you can come for five minutes. If you want to come for two minutes, you can come for two minutes. If you want to meditate, meditate. For however long you have, as frequently as you can, meditate and let go of your ideas of how long and what you must be doing. In time, that single drop of water, that single drop of meditation will bring you great, great, great joy. Let us join now together in meditation. Let us join in a meditation that will be a blessing to you, a blessing to each of us. Let us honor the lineage in all of its branches and the living tradition, the mystical teachings of Kriya Yoga that you have drawn into your life I am simply here. Although the mystics would say, I drew you to myself so that I would unfold, that I would grow spiritually. I think that's true. I think that as we share this time together, I get more from you than you could possibly ever get from me. From your yoga city, your blessings, your joining with me in meditation together at this moment, let us meditate. Focus your attention at the point between your eyes. Sit with the spine erect. Place your hands in the Om Mudra.
with the index finger and the thumb together. Place them on your thighs and turn your head to the left, exhaling twice. Bring the head back to the center. Focusing your attention at the sun center. That means moving the eyes to the sun center. Begin to watch your breath. Take three sipping breaths, sipping as if through a straw. Exhaling with a double exhalation facing frontward. Again, a sipping breath. Double exhalation. A sipping breath. A double exhalation. Continuing to use that sipping breath, pull the energy from the limbs of your body to the trunk of your body. From the trunk of the body, pull the energy into the spinal column. From the base of the spine, pull the energy up to the sun center. Move that energy as a golden ball of light out in front of you and sweep around to the left, behind you, to the right and in front of you. And do this two more times. Expand that golden ball of light until you are comfortable within it. And now ascend to the high place, ascend to the abode of meditation, above the room you are in, of the continent you are on, above the earth plane. Ascend to the high place. And find your place of meditation. Keeping your eyes focused at the sun center. Begin to watch your breath. Let the breath breathe itself. As you inhale, hear the sound of hong. As you exhale, silently hear the sound of saw. Let the breath breathe itself. No effort on your part. Only Hong Sa.
the mind begins to wander, bring it back to the Hamsa. Can return to the sound of the hong on the inhalation and the saw on the exhalation. Let there be nothing, no thing between you and the hong saw. Return to the Hongsa. Now in the next exhalation, let go of the Hongsa breath and just simply sit in the after effect of the Kriya. O oh, ye powers that be, pour forth your blessings upon these souls. May the golden light of Kriya pour down upon your crown center, 
Feel the golden dewdrops of bliss pouring down upon you at this moment. Feel the anandic bliss filling every cell of your being. The deep abiding quietude. The deep abiding ananda. 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 Ananda, 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 da, da. Ananda, Ananda, Ananda. Feel the golden light filling you, filling every cell of your being, and know that thou art that. Thou art the bliss of Kriya. Holding this awareness, know that you can return to this meditation spot at any time you wish. That you can breathe Hongsa at any time you wish. Not when you're driving, but other times. Turn inward and meditate even for just a moment. Meditation is always just a moment. May you find peace, may you find hope, may you find courage, may you find strength. May you find all that you need pouring into your life at this moment. Know that you are accepted at this moment. Know that on this special day, the lineage and I and I and the lineage say unto you, you are accepted. You are loved, you are accepted. You have that which you need. You have only to look within, to quiet the mind, and you will know how to draw those things that you need to your life. Namaste. Namaskar.